Okay, guys, welcome to week 10, your last week of summer math. I know some of you are probably ecstatic that, that all the math is ending, but I know school's starting, and I know that a lot of you are going to go in feeling a little bit more confident, and you are ahead of your, your classmates because most of them just sat around playing video games this summer, and you have kept your brain going so uh, if nothing else I, I hope you feel good about that and um, this lesson that we're doing today um, you're gonna do a little bit of it at the beginning of the year and then a lot of it at the end of the year so this is a lesson that's good to watch now and then watch it again uh, maybe in like April uh, or March and, um, and and it'll come in handy okay so there's three themes that we're talking about here we're talking about something called uh, polynomials and then how to deal with polynomials now, um, a polynomial um, is just a fancy something. <laughs> it's just fancy talk for an expression that has a bunch of different terms, and those terms could have different exponents, okay? Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to be adding and subtracting them. So uh, the main idea I want you to write here is we're just going to combine like terms and you've heard this before combine like terms and all that that means is that is you have to make sure that the variables match okay so anytime you want to add or subtract the variables have to match the cool thing is that when you're multiplying polynomials um, anybody can go together anybody can be multiplied together they don't have to match in other words okay and we'll do an example all the examples are below we're just kind of writing our notes up here so uh, that's pretty cool now factoring polynomials until we get to the end of this lesson and I show you this is not going to make much sense but it's like undoing multiplication so hopefully it'll make sense by the end of the video this is the this is the most difficult thing right here I promise um, but the other two are pretty doable and that's what we're gonna start with to warm up with okay so how do we do this junk so here's our examples all right now combining like terms the note that I wrote above is if we're adding and subtracting which notice even though there's parentheses guys between every single thing it's either a plus or a minus so um, you just have to make sure you only put terms together that go together now remember to be very careful with parentheses uh, it's kind of like PEMDAS where if there's parentheses look inside and see if anything can go together and nobody matches like even though these have a P notice this one has a squared on it and this does not so you are not allowed to put those together same thing here a P squared a normal P and no P at all so nobody goes together okay now I see a little sneaky thing in this problem that needs to happen first um, do you see this minus sign uh, well we really have to be careful because remember if there's no number written in front of the parentheses it's like an invisible one and before I start the problem I really need to think of this as a negative one and I need to distribute it to all three terms so my first step is distributing now if this had been a plus one you don't have to distribute the plus one because positive one times anything just stays the same but since it's a minus one it's going to change these things uh, to negatives so I'm going to recopy the front p plus p squared and since there's nothing in front of it I'm not going to rewrite the parentheses I get to drop the parentheses now a negative one times a 2p squared well what's negative one times two negative two recopy the p squared negative one times four is negative four recopy the p and then a negative one times a negative one is a positive one so this is my first step that helps me drop the parentheses and now I actually get to do the combining like terms all this means is when I look okay see how this is just a normal p with there's like no exponent up here I need to look for another normal p which is over here and the way that you do this to combine like terms is you just put their coefficients together so add coefficients that's how it works 
I can't spell coefficients apparently, but I'm guessing a lot of you can either. So that's okay. Add coefficients. So what's the invisible number in front of the P? Well, it's a 1. So I've got a 1P minus 4 of them. So 1 minus 4 is what? 1 minus 4 is a negative 3 with a P behind it. Okay? Now the next thing I have in my lineup is a P squared. So do I have any other P squareds? Well, yes I do. It's right here. Notice I'm boxing the negative that's in front of it, that minus sign acts just like a negative. So once again, I put my invisible one here. So I have one of these minus two of these. So one minus two is what? One minus two is negative one P squared. Okay. And now I've dealt with everything up here except this number at the back. Now, is there another number to put with it? I don't see one. So I'm just going to recopy the plus one. And that is finished. I know it looks ugly, but that is technically your answer. You don't have to write the one in the front if you don't want, so feel free to erase that because you technically don't, don't need it. Um, but this is what this looks like, okay? Now, that's how it's always going to work. So just uh, look for what is like or what matches and then put their coefficients together and recopy the letters and you're done, okay? Now, with multiplying... This is actually pretty cool. Uh, with multiplying, anything is fair game. And um, what I'm going to do is um, show you how to do something called FOIL, okay? Now, FOIL, there's, it's, it's an acronym for first, outside, inside, last. Um, and it's kind of tricky to use, uh, but it's not too terrible. Um, so if you want to write the words first, outside, inside, and last, you can, um, but I'm going to keep saying it over and over again, so you might not need to write it, okay? Um, so here's what you do. Um, don't make this harder than it is, okay? So we've got two different things multiplying by two different things. Well, let me ask you to imagine something. Imagine if this, don't, don't write this on your paper. I don't want you to ruin your paper. Pretend that wasn't even there. If that wasn't there and it was just a 3 times all of that, what would you do with that 3? Hopefully you're thinking distribute, 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 okay? And that is what FOIL is doing. It is doing distributing with the 3, okay? And then it's like asking you to imagine cover up the 3 and then distribute with the first number that's in the parentheses. So then I would do x times this one and x times this one. So um, just keep in mind, if you don't like FOIL, I'm just doing distributing twice. I'm doing a double distribute. So what I'm going to do is for FOIL, for the F and the O, okay, I'm going to imagine that the, the plus 3 is not there, okay? So I'm going to take the x and multiply it by the 2x, okay? That's where the f comes into play. You're doing this one times the first one in the other parenthesis. So you're doing x times 2x. Now I'm just going to write it all out and then we're going to fix out, you know, what that would be. Then I need to distribute this x over to this negative 1. Now when I do this x times this negative 1, that's what the O stands for. It's the outside of everything, okay? So x times a negative 1. So I'm going to put plus x times a negative 1. Then we've already distributed the first term, so the idea now is we're going to imagine that the x in the front was not there. So pretend that's not there. So what would we do with this 3? Well, we would distribute the 3 to both. Now when we distribute the 3 to the 2x, notice how those two terms are on the inside of the problem. That's where that i comes in. And then this 3 times this negative 1, when we do that distributing, those are the last terms in each parenthesis. That's why teachers say FOIL but we are just distributing twice. We distribute the x to both, then we distribute the 3 to both. So let me write that out. 3 times 2x, 3 times 2x, plus 
3 times negative 1. So sorry I didn't leave a lot of room here, but hopefully you fit it on. So this is all for distributing, okay? Now we've got to clean it up. Okay, so what is x times 2 times x? Well, when you multiply something like this, you just do the number, which is 2. I'll use a different color here. You just do the 2. And then you look at x times x. Well, x times x you can write as x squared because it's a number times itself. x times x is x squared. Plus, what's negative 1 times x? Well, that's just a negative x. What is 3 times 2x? On these kind, you just multiply the numbers together, and then you recopy the variable. And then what is 3 times negative 1? Well, that is a negative 3. Okay, so you have all of these terms, and this looks really ugly, and some people think they're done, and they're like, yay, okay, move on, but be careful, because the reason we talked about combining like terms is because when you get to this point, if anybody is a like term, or if anybody matches, you have to keep going, okay? Now, does anybody match 2x squared? No, I don't see another 2x squared, so I'll recopy. Does anybody match a normal x? Yes, right here. So those two match. So if we're adding polynomials, remember that you only add their coefficients. So this is a negative 1 plus a 6. Okay, negative 1 plus 6 is positive 5. Recopy the x. When you're adding, you're recopying the x. When you multiply, since there were two of them, that's when you put the exponent. So don't get confused between those two, okay? And then the minus 3 at the back, nobody matches another normal number, so I just recopy it, and this is your answer, okay? So I'm going to do this one more time a little bit quicker, because it may be easier if I just do it quicker. Um, same idea as what we just did, okay? I'm going to pretend the minus 3 isn't there, and I'm going to first distribute my 2y to both of those, okay? So 2y times y, 2y times y is y squared, so 2y squared, okay? Because it's y times y, which means there's two of them. 2y times a positive 5, so what's 2 times 5? That's 10 and you recopy the y, okay? So I just handled my f and my o, my first and my outside, um, by just distributing the 2y to both. Now you pretend in your head that the 2y isn't there, and we're going to distribute the negative 3 to both of those, okay? So what's negative 3 times y? Well, it's just minus 3y. And what's negative 3 times positive 5? Negative 15. So I did everything I did over here just a little bit faster, and I didn't show each and every little thing that we were multiplying. I just actually multiplied it in my head as we went, and I wrote it all down. Now we're not done because some of these people match. Nobody matches 2y squared, so there he is. But 10y and 3y, these are both just a normal y. So what's 10 minus 3? Well, that's a 7y. And then does anybody match the 15? No, so I recopy it. So this is my answer for this one. So these are... Um, you have to take your time, okay? Don't rush through them or you will mess up. But just remember covering up terms either with your finger or cover them up in your mind and just distribute, distribute, then go to the second one, distribute, distribute, and you're done. That is what FOIL is, okay? Now, undo FOIL. So uh, what we're going to do here is, is factoring. It's when you undo the multiplication or the FOIL that we just did above. So now what's going to happen, it's kind of weird. It's like, um, how do I explain this? I guess I could say it like this. It would be like me giving you this circled answer right here, okay? And you having to figure out what it looked like in the beginning. So factoring is when you take this and say, uh-oh, what was I multiplying that made those up? And you're having to figure out this part. Okay, now that seems like, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? But it's actually not too terrible. Um, there's a way to figure out like how to make that happen. So the general idea is to figure out what goes in these parentheses. And your answer is going to look like 
it's going to look like this. It's going to be um, some x and some number, some x and some number, and uh, that's what it'll always be. Now I'm going to show you uh, for this video just an easy way to do them at first, and then your teacher's going to have different methods for when they get harder, but there's so many methods. I don't want to do them in the video because I don't want you to get messed up in class, but I'll show you just the quick, easy, in your head way that you're supposed to deal with it, okay? Here's how I teach my students. I tell them to look at these two numbers, and what they're going for is they are trying to find me, and I will write out a statement, find me two numbers that multiply to 12, and the reason it's 12 is because that's in the very back of the problem but add to make 7. And the reason it's 7 is because that is what's in the middle of the problem. Okay, so that's the number 7. So without even really looking at this, this is the question I tell them to think in their head. I need two numbers that multiply to make 12 but add to make 7. So surely you can find those numbers, right? Like what multiplies to make 12? Well, 2 times 6, yes. But does 2 and 6, does that add up to 7? No. So 2 and 6 are not the numbers you need. But maybe you've already thought of 3 and 4. Okay, 3 times 4 is 12, and 3 plus 4 is 7. So if you find the magic numbers, 3 and 4, yay, you're pretty much done. Um, what you have to do is you write your answer in this form with the parentheses. So I'm going to put a parenthesis times a parenthesis. These numbers of 3 and 4 go in the back of each parenthesis. And since they're both positive, we're putting positives in front of them, a plus sign in front of them. And then whatever goes in the front, y'all, is just the variable in the problem. And in this problem, the variable is x. So what you've just done is you've taken the answer to a FOIL problem or a double distribute problem and you have worked backwards to figure out what the problem was before it all started. Like if you undid the multiplication, what are the two factors that came from it? And if you want to check your answer, okay, if you want to check to see if you did it right, then you just take this and you do the double distribute thing that we did right up here on these two. So I'm going to do that on this one, but not on that, okay? So here's how this would work. Um, I would distribute the x to both. So x times x is x squared. x times 4 is 4x. Then I would do the 3 and distribute it to both. 3 times x is 3x. 3, 3 times 4 is 12. Now when you look at this, does anybody go together? Yes, the two terms in the middle go together, and what do they make? 4 and 3, 7x, and then plus 12. So did we get what, what it said to get at the thing? Yeah, at the beginning, we sure did. So this is my check to go, yay, I did it right, because if I multiply all that out, I get this. But the answer to the problem is this part. I don't want you to think you have to do all this. This is the answer to the problem. All right, cool. So here's another example. If we're asked to factor, we're going to do the same thing we did back here. I need two numbers that multiply to make the negative 15 because it's at the back. You always multiply to make the back number. And I need two numbers that add together to make the negative 2. Notice I took those minus signs with it, those negative signs with it. So um, how do I find those two numbers? Well, let's start with the multiplying part first. What times what is 15? Well, 3 and 5 is a pretty popular one. So it's 3 times 5. But here's the deal. If this is a negative 15, one of those, 3 and 5, has to be negative. Okay, so it's either a 3 with a negative 5 or a negative 3 and a positive 5 because that's the only way to get a negative, right? You have to do a negative times a positive and that makes a negative. So it's this or it's this. Now what I have to do next is check these combinations to see which ones add together to get a negative 2. So would a negative 2 be a 3 plus a negative 5? Or would a negative 2 come from a negative 3 plus a positive 5? Well, for a negative 2, it would be this combination. 
because positive 3 plus negative 5 is negative 2. And when you multiply those together, you get negative 15. So now that I've found the two lucky numbers, I stick them in the back. Now that's a positive 3, so it gets a plus sign. That's a negative 5, so it gets a minus sign. And what variable is this problem using? Well, it's using x again. So there we go. That is my answer. Now, I'm not going to check my answer on this one because I know that's right. But if I wanted to check it, I could double distribute, double distribute, just like we did up here. And you could see that we did it right. But that is factoring. And factoring is a big deal the rest of your high school life. It's going to be really hard for everybody in your class. I'm just telling you, it's the hardest thing for Algebra 1 students to understand. But hopefully this made sense enough that you can try the homework. So good luck, guys. We'll see you on the solution video. And uh, have fun.